Hello, this is Broyer, and welcome back to another episode of Civilization VI A to Z, where I will go through each of the civilizations one by one and provide thoughts, strategy, and rankings. Today, we will take a look at Australia, which can be a very strong civilization, but they are very dependent on getting a map with the right tiles to support their bonuses. Australia's leader is John Curtin. His leader bonus is that he gives plus 100% production if they have either received a declaration of war in the past 10 turns or liberated a city in the past 20 turns. This can be an incredibly strong bonus that in theory you could technically maintain for the entire game. That being said, you could also have a game where it never triggers at all because it depends on the other civilizations doing something and is a bit out of your control. Late game liberations could really slingshot your path to a science victory if timed properly. The overall scores that I would give this bonus are Domination, I would give it a 5. Production's good for, you know, any victory type technically. It's going to be really good for a Domination victory, help you really build out a lot of units that you might be lacking if you do get declared war on or, you know, really want to push for a late game conquest victory. Science, I would give it a 7. Again, production is key for any victory type, but especially so for science. Those late game rocket parts take a lot of production to get through, and that 100% bonus towards the end of the game can really make a huge difference. Culture, I'm going to give it a 3, and religion, I'm going to give it a 3. Both of these, it's because that extra production bonus can really help get some of those key wonders that you need for either of those victory types. Australia's civilization ability is called Land Down Under. There's three parts to this bonus. The first part is that you get plus three housing in coastal cities. This is a generally good bonus that doesn't directly point towards any specific victory condition. However, if you are settling most or all of your cities on the coast to take advantage of this bonus, you will likely have a lot of good locations for late game seaside resorts to push towards a culture victory. The second part of this bonus is that building a pasture triggers a culture bomb claiming the surrounding tiles. This allows you to get a lot more tiles, specifically the good tiles that you need a lot sooner, and can really add up as you progress through the game. When you get to use it for something good, it can be amazing. When you don't, it's still pretty good to get some more tiles. The third part of this ability is that campuses, commercial hubs, holy sites, and theater squares gain plus one to their yields in tiles with charming appeal and plus three with breathtaking appeal. This is an okay bonus on charming tiles and a great bonus on breathtaking, though it could conflict with seaside resorts if you're going for a culture victory. The overall scores I'd get for this bonus are domination, I would give it a four. I mean, the commercial hubs is gonna help you out with uh, really fielding a large army if you are pushing for a domination victory. Science, I would give it a six. That bonus to the uh, campuses can really, really add up, especially in the early game if you can get a couple key campuses on those breathtaking appeal tiles. Culture, I would give it an eight. Yes, you do have the bonus to the theater squares as well as the other uh, zones, but this is less about that specific bonus and more about the bonuses encouraging those coastal cities, which are good for seaside resort spam in the late game. And religion, I'm going to go ahead and give it a six here as well. If you find a key location with a breathtaking appeal for your, your uh, holy site, that plus three can really make a difference. Australia's unique unit is called the Digger. It replaces the infantry, it has a higher combat strength, plus it gets plus 10 combat strength on coastal tiles, as well as plus 5 combat strength outside of the Australian territory. This is a good, solid unit. It's easy to get that plus 5 bonus outside of territory. It's a little bit harder to get the plus 10 bonus, but that plus 10 bonus could really help you zero in and capture some key coastal cities that you want to liberate in order to get that plus 100% production bonus in the late game. Overall, I would give this unit an eight. It, it's a pretty solid, good unit. You're gonna be using a lot of infantry in the late game, and this just makes them that much stronger. Australia's unique infrastructure is called the Outback Station. This is a tile improvement, and it gives you plus one food, plus one production, and plus half a housing when constructed. You also get plus one food from every adjacent pasture, plus one production to every adjacent pasture once you get steam power, and plus one production for every two adjacent Outback Station, also with steam power. You also get plus one food from every two adjacent Outback stations with rapid deployment. In summary, build a lot of Outback stations. Build them in triangles or diamonds for the late game bonuses for adjacency. Also, it's probably a good idea to build Outback stations in place of farms because they'll still give you a pretty decent bonus for food and a huge production bonus as well. On any tile that you can, you're probably gonna want to build an Outback station over anything else. They are also a great way for making desert tiles worthwhile, especially coupled with Petra. The overall scores for this bonus are, I would give Domination a 4. Again, that production is going to help you build a bigger military. Science, I would give it a 7. Again, production is absolutely critical for those late game rocket parts. For both culture and religion, I would give these threes again here as well. Again, this is really about building those wonders that help support both of those victories. 
Overall strategy for Australia, if you're playing as them, just remember they have the ability to have a large amount of production, especially if they can find a way to encourage their leader bonus to be active. You may want to have your military appear small so that you can encourage people to declare war on you. Maybe have a couple really strong units at a key strategic location that can hold the enemy off while you take advantage of that 100% boost to either get some more military units or build some key infrastructure or wonders. Remember, you don't need to win the wars that you're in, just survive them. Another idea is to put yourself in a position to quickly take out cities that can be liberated. Liberating cities keeps your warmonger score low and don't have to be defended by you. It may be worthwhile to declare war on a stronger opponent, take and liberate one city, and then defend out until you can get a white piece. For governments, there's actually a lot of really good options for Australia depending on how you're playing them, but here's what I would recommend. For the uh, four card slot, all can be good, but I would consider oligarchy for the unit experience since your early warriors can ultimately upgrade into your late game diggers if you can keep them alive long enough. For the six card slot, if you ended up going with a religion, theocracy can be good for a discount to faith buys. Consider going merchant republic to upgrade and build your late game military to truly become the world's police force. And finally, for the eight card slot, again, all of them could be good for different situations, but I personally would go for the communism since the production bonus can combo so well with a 100% boost that you get from your leader bonus. If you're playing against Australia, his leader agenda is called Perpetually on Guard. He likes to form defensive packs with his friends and likes civilizations that liberate other cities. He dislikes civilizations that are occupying enemy cities. If you want to play friendly with him, get a defensive pact with him and enjoy the fact that he will be there to protect you. Consider liberating cities yourselves. This has a double bonus of making Australia happy and gives him less cities that he can liberate himself. Otherwise, if you're going to be enemies with Australia, try and block him in and prevent him from getting good coastal land or land near lots of pastures. Be ready to smash him quickly if you do declare war so that he can't enjoy his double production bonus for too long. The victory condition that I would recommend for Australia is really science. That's, that's the primary one you're going to want to go for. The bonuses to production just really make a late game science push the most logical choice. Where do they rank overall? For domination, I would give them a 6. They do get a bonus point here for a little bit of cohesion. Really, you want people to declare war on you more than declaring war on them. And if you get too big, that might not happen. Even in wars that you declare, you're going to want to target liberating cities instead of conquering them. Still, you're going to have a ton of production and can ultimately push for a conquest victory without too much trouble. Science, I would give them an 8. Again, they get another bonus point here for cohesion. They get a small science bonus from the appeal boost on their campuses, but primarily their science victory is propelled by their very strong production bonuses. Try and force your leader bonus as much as you can in the late game. Line up fleets or armies outside of cities that can be liberated and plan to conquer them every 15 to 20 turns to keep your double production bonus up all of the time. For culture, I'm going to go ahead and give them a 6. They're actually getting a little bit of a bonus point here for their coastal preference as much as anything. There are no direct bonuses to culture besides the appeal bonus on the theater square. Still, because of their coastal preference, again, I'm going to go ahead and give them that bonus point because they're going to be able to have a large number of seaside resort locations. Also, the production bonus can really help to get those critical culture wonders as well. And finally, for religion, I'm going to give them a 4. The appeal bonus on the holy site alone isn't enough to warrant a push for a religious victory, but if you can utilize your production bonuses to get a few of those critical religion wonders, it is technically possible. What are your thoughts? Did I get it right? Did I miss something? Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, please give me a thumbs up if you do like this video and want to see more of these. I do plan to keep these going, so I do appreciate you watching, and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you, and goodbye.